All right, everyone, today um, we're going to pick up with uh, linear relationships in the form of y equals mx plus b. So if you notice here, and I'm going to move the screen over a little bit, if you notice, we have our um, t here of 7.7 .7 that says that we're going to apply the mathematical process standards to represent linear relationships using multiple representations. And that's exactly what this unit um, is about, multiple representations. So what does that actually mean? That simply means that we are able to um, um, write an equation, give a verbal description, put it in a graph or in tabular form, meaning in a table, the same type of information. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at it, an example. And uh, through the magic of YouTube, I'm going to move that screen over now. So for this first part of my video, what I'm going to do is we're going to be looking at representing linear relationships using a table. Now, as you notice here in this example, in a linear relationship between two quantities, as one quantity changes by a constant amount, the other quantity also changes by a constant amount. Proportional relationships are a special kind of linear relationship. So if we look at this example, in example number one, it says a man's shoe size is approximately three times his foot length in inches minus 22. Use a table to represent the relationship between foot length and shoe size. So what I'm going to do in our problem is we are going to look at, number one, representing it um, as an equation. We're going to use some of the tactics or skills that we learned in the equation unit to actually do that. We are also going to um, write it in an equation, as I said, using the verbal description that we have here, and we're going to put it into a table. Now, the only thing that we're not going to do today in this part is actually put it in a graph, but I'm going to go and show you what that looks like now. All right, so as you see here, I've moved over to the um, document camera at this point. We're going to actually start by looking at the situation that we were looking at before. Now, if you remember, it says that a man's shoe size is going to be approximately three times his foot length in inches minus 22. And again, we're going to use a table to actually um, figure out uh, what the relationship or look at it in tabular form, I should say. Okay, so first of all, I want to write down the things that I know. I know that, number one, a man's shoe size made a little boo-boo there. A man's shoe size is approximately, and I'm going to abbreviate approximately, three times the length of his foot in inches minus 22. So you know, if you notice here, writing down the what I know has sort of been like my verbal description. Okay, now that's one of the multiple representations. So if I were to do a check mark here, verbal equation. graph and a table and I know that I'm not going to be doing this that this time but I've already written it or it came to us in verbal okay now I did write down what I know and if you notice the way that I've written this down it's sort of possibly going to help us fill out our equation a little bit easier so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself my equation frame as I like. I'm going to write myself five boxes. Now, if you notice here at the top of the screen, I'm going to write this in terms of y equals mxb, where some value of y is going to be equal to your rate of change, which we're going to talk about, times x plus b, which again is some constant. Now, your child should have this information already written down in their notes in the unpacking part of our unit at the very beginning, okay? So I want to write this down as y equals mx plus b. So first of all, let's also identify but what my rate of change would be, okay? My rate of change, also known as m in this case. Now, some of you adults may know M in a different way, but that doesn't get told to your child until eighth grade. 
So we're just going to focus on rate of change at this point. So what is actually changing if we look and analyze this problem? A man's shoe is approximately three times the length of his foot in inches minus 22. So what's changing? Okay, what are we going to associate our variable, our variable to be? Okay, so I'm going to associate my rate of change as going to be three. Okay, so for every inch, we're going to multiply it by three. So again, if I were to write y is equal to mx plus b above this, I'm going to start associating the information in my problem. I know that in my chart, the value of y is probably going to be my unknown. So I'm going to say that y is going to go in this first box, okay? Unknown at the, at the time, I should say. Now, what's my unknown? My unknown at this point is going to be or my variable, I should say, my variable is going to be the person's length of that foot in inches. So I'm going to multiply 3 times x because for every inch, it's going to change by 3. So multiplying that by 3 plus, or in this case, plus a negative 22. And why am I adding a negative 22? Doesn't that mean the exact same thing? as subtracting 22 sure and because again here in the problem it says that a man's shoe size is approximately three times the length of his foot in inches minus 22 so adding a negative 22 same thing so at this point i can check off the equation now all that i need to do now is set up my table okay so i'm going to give you a couple of hypotheticals and i want to go ahead and use my black marker again I also want to talk about the independent and dependent quantities. Now, this is something that your child should come to me or you as a student should come to me already knowing, okay? I'm going to write down one, two, three, four lines, giving me five blanks. Okay, now the independent quantity is normally associated with x, my x value, and the dependent quantity is normally associated with my y, okay? And the reason that I've done this is when you are doing a table, normally the x is at the top and the y is at the bottom. So what value is going to be dependent? What value is going to be independent? What depends on, on what the other? Does foot length depend on the, your shoe size? Or does shoe size depend on your foot length? You guessed it. So the foot length is going to be our independent. And again, that's going to be in inches. And I'm going to make this my x value. Circle that. So again, my shoe size will depend on my foot length, not the other way around. And this is going to be my y value. Okay. Okay, and the shoe size. So, what if a person had an 8-inch foot, 9-inch, 10, 11, or 12-inch foot? Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out the shoe size using this equation that we derived earlier. So, what I would do, and I'm, I'm going to show you the first two to see if we see a pattern maybe. Okay, and then um, you'll know how to do it with the equation and to see if we see a pattern that's emerging here. All right, so y, this value, okay, will equal three, in this case, times eight, minus 22. I'm just gonna write minus 22 because remember I said that plus negative 22 is the same as minus 22, okay? So 24 minus 22, and if I simplify that down, that's going to give me a 2, okay? Size 2 foot if his foot is 8 inches, okay? What about if, again, I set up my problem y is equal to 3. I'm just following this up here. y is equal to 3 times 9 minus 22. 27 minus 22 is equal to 5. Okay, so what do we see happening here at this point? You may not see it just yet. We'll go ahead and do another one. 
y is equal to 3 times 10 minus 22 to 30 minus 22 is equal to 8. See a pattern yet? Now what it looks to be is happening is that for every shoe size, uh, foot length, I'm sorry, as we go up, so for every inch, it looks to be that we're adding a shoe size that appears to be plus what? You guessed it, plus 3, okay? Now, if I use this equation to fill all these out, it's still going to come out to be the exact same thing, but following the pattern, this now becomes 11. This now becomes 14, okay? So, back to what we were saying. Multiple representations is just about showing it in these four forms. And in this instance, or in this example, this video, we have done uh, three of these. Um, the only one that will come later will be your graph, which I'll do a second video on. This is part one of two. Okay, so again, this is 7.7a, um, or just 7.7. .7. You can find information about this in your um, book. You can always come to tutorials, ask me a question in class, and as always, I will see you tomorrow.